Ultra Kill is great. No, that doesn't give it justice. Ultra Kill is awesome. You already know that though. I mean, everybody knows it because nobody shuts up about it. If you go on literally any video about any form of first person shooter, I guarantee you'll see at least five comments mentioning Ultra Kill. It's especially bad if they're on your own video about some FPS game you've been wanting to talk about for a while and you want the focus to be on that specific game. Like, I get it. I really do. Ultra Kill is a one of a kind first person shooter game but almost all of you make it out like it's the only FPS game that's worth all your time and attention when it's really not. Let's be real. The FPS genre is vast, it's huge, and there are a multitude of games within it that are severely underrated and deserve your attention. So I'm gonna be banning the word Ultra Kill in the comment section of this video, at least temporarily, as I want all the focus to be on the specific games I'm gonna be talking about. Anyway, let's make a quick incision right here on the screen. Incision is probably the only early access game I'll be talking about in this video, as I'm actually pretty good friends with the fella making it. Oh, uh, okay. Never mind then. I, I, I fucking get it. No, I, I get it. It's fine. It's fine. Incision is a blood-soaked, gritty first-person shooter, and it's one of those boomer shooters you've probably been hearing about. There's no reloading in this game. No, 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 no. You can just shoot every single round in your weapon without any dumbass reload animation huh? halting your carnage. Apart from the revolver. But that's never an issue, really, because revolvers always look cool when you reload them. Incision actually makes them somehow even cooler, because the alt fire on the thing is a spin. And if you time your shot as soon as it glows, it basically becomes a railgun. Have I sold you on the game yet? Incision is one of the few games that makes me feel physically uncomfortable while playing it. In a good way, of course. That's mainly from its visuals. This game looks disgusting. No matter what level you're playing, it'll almost always be coated in flesh, blood, and rotting corpses. Yet somehow they never get stale and constantly feel unique. Get used to the color red though. Literally the entire game is just coated in a red filter. The soundtrack adds to this uncomfortable feel too. The composer... Inny? I don't know how to say the name. But anyway, he did an amazing job at creating a soundtrack that sounds like nails on a chalkboard. But again, in a good way. You must know what I mean with this analogy. Come on, I'm not wrong here. It's the exact same type of sound. So that already ticks the box for the aesthetics. It completely nails that shit. Honestly, I would even say it might be my favorite FPS game stylistically. Okay, so Incision is an FPS game, as you can clearly see from the footage. And I haven't even talked about the weapons and gameplay yet. And yeah, the weapons are cool. Obviously, I've already talked about the nice little revolver which acts as your starting weapon. And yeah, there are your standard FPS weapons here too, like the shotgun gun, the machine gun, the rocket launcher, and a blood-filled flesh specimen named Kitty. Wait a second. This isn't in a traditional FPS game. I don't remember seeing this fella in fucking Wolfenstein. Enemies are a blast to fight too, and these two factors I've just talked about tick the last two boxes on what makes an FPS game worth your time. Although regarding these enemies, what the fuck was going on in Smooth Brain Dev's mind while creating them? These things are absolutely horrific monstrosities. Why is there so much meat? Honestly, I'm fairly certain I'm probably not allowed to show some of these fuckers on YouTube if I want to be able to feed myself this month. I mean, hey, at least they're all in this low poly style, so they aren't too horrific. Oh my god, what the fuck? This specimen looks sprawled out. Brawl is awesome, and it's literally what I've been personally looking for in an FPS game for a long time. Do you fellas remember the game Ghost Runner? I do, and it was a good game, but while I was playing it, the whole time I was thinking, wowee, I sure wish I had a firearm instead of this stupid ass sword. Well, Sprawl is exactly that, which means it's a better cyberpunk game than Ghost Runner and Cyberpunk 2077. I don't make the rules here, stop booing me, they could never fix the shitty story with patches, that game sucks. Okay, comparing Sprawl to Ghost Runner does not give the game justice because the only similarities are really the fact it takes place in a cyberpunk universe and wall running. In Sprawl, you play as some superhuman with undiagnosed schizophrenia, and that schizophrenia just says exactly what you're thinking while playing. This was once your favourite. 
wasn't it? How did he know? The main character also has bullet time slow motion powers that lets you see every single weak spot on an enemy. Now this mechanic is very important to what makes Sprawl unique. See this game is about precision. You're basically a ninja. Hitting enemies in these weak spots are what lets you regain resources such as ammo, health and even your bullet time bar which is called adrenaline. I, I probably should have mentioned that earlier. You're gonna be wanting to fill that bar up constantly though because if you stand still for merely a second you get absolutely demolished pushing you to learn the game. <laughs> And when it all clicks, you feel so cool. Luckily, the movement is an absolute blast too, because the wall running is not restrictive in the slightest, making keeping on your toes during fights a lot of fun. You'll be bouncing around walls almost constantly like you're a cyberpunk Ryu Hayabusa. Oh god... <sighs> This is Ghost Runner. Sprawl is a good game, and honestly, it's kinda unreal that these two games I've spoken about so far were made by one person. Do you get it? Andre, please help me out here. Just, just transition. I'm going to ruin your day. That's right, I'll be talking about how good Unreal Tournament 2004 is, and how it not only doesn't have online support anymore, it's also unlisted on official digital stores alongside the other Unreal games. God damn it! UT 2004 is a competitive multiplayer shooter. It doesn't have ranked, just a good variety of game modes, a multitude of maps, a big roster of cool playable characters, and an awesome arsenal of weapons, with most of them having an alternate mode of fire. Adrenaline pull. Back when I played this game for a video, I only played Deathmatch and Team Deathmatch. Just doing that I managed to fall in love with the game, but playing it again for this video, I wanted to try the other game modes, and... What the fuck? In just one hour of playing, I took part in a crazy free-for-all. Double kill. Assaulted a convoy to steal some missiles. Attackers have breached the repair vessel. You must open the rear door of the repair vessel. Fought for the control of a big battlefield? Became a mutant and had to fend off everyone else in the map? Double King. And helped fight off an invasion of weird monsters. The variety in this game is incredible. But hold on, didn't I say that this game no longer supports online? Yep, I did. That's why all the footage you're seeing is me playing with bots. And the game is still a blast. There were zero hiccups with the bots across all of the game modes I tried, which is really impressive. Unreal Tournament 2004 looks great, plays great, and works great. And the fact that it, alongside the other Unreal games, has been unlisted is nothing short of a crime. Red Team is the winner. I've already made two videos on this game before, yet despite this I still don't know how to say its name. I'm just gonna say Trepang 2 because Trepang Squared just sounds weird to me. Anyway, despite the fact I've already made two videos on Trepang 2, I still want to talk about it because this game is incredible. Like, I'm, I want to make it clear right now, I'm not exaggerating when I say this game is fucking incredible. I want you to look at this clip and tell me otherwise. <laughs> game has convinced me that violence is kind of epic. At a first glance, Trepang 2 doesn't seem that special. It kind of just looks like your standard military shooter, but this is the perfect example of the term, don't read a book by its cover. There are very few military shooters where you can shoot a grenade in midair while in bullet time blowing it up and killing multiple enemies at once. Oh, and I don't know any other military shooter where you can drop kick a fella so hard in the face it literally propels you backwards. You can't do that shit in fucking Medal of Honor. I know I keep going on about it, but like, I mean, just look at it. Truly take in what you see. How can you view this and not want to play the game for yourself? 
It never ever gets stale for the entire playthrough. Honestly, every element of Trepang 2 prevents it from ever getting stale, especially its levels. There is an amazing amount of variety here and it constantly keeps you on edge with its surprises. Am I in the back rooms? What the, what the fuck? You aren't even just fighting random ass soldiers either a lot of the time. They've got a nice variety with that too. <laughs> Trepang 2 is peak. Just go play it. These are only a few of the FPS games that I think absolutely deserve your time. Obviously, I can't speak about every single one of them without sounding like a broken record, because I mean, they're first person shooter games, there's only so many times I can be like, the gunplay is nice. So instead, I'm gonna list some off that you should check out for yourself. <clears throat> Proteus, Get to the Orange Door, Harot, Maximum Action, Wrath, Aeon of Ruin, Severed Steel, Nightmare Reaper, Slayer's X, oh, and of course we can't forget 77p Eggwire. I have no idea what the fuck is even going on with this game.